first of all, man, I'm blessed to be able to uh, coach at, at Kansas State, a place I love, with people I love, uh, you know, doing what I love. And so that's just an honor. So thankful to the Lord for this opportunity. Uh, second thing I want to do is uh, wish Scott Drew a happy birthday. And, uh, um, you know, so if y'all see him, it's his birthday. Make a big deal out about it. It'll, it'll, it'll drive him crazy. And, uh, and then uh, thirdly about my team, uh, just super excited about these guys, man. Uh, uh, pretty much a new roster. We have three guys back. Thankful for David Gasson. Uh, when a young man spends three years with you in this day and age, uh, it means that you're doing a little something right and, uh, and that, that he's really enjoying his time. So thankful for his leadership and uh, the guys we have in, man, just, just terrific young men. They're passionate about the game of basketball, uh, a lot of versatility, uh, better shooting and size. And so um, I've said a number of times, they remind me of our uh, 2012 team when I was at Baylor. Um, with the size and then the, 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 the guard play. And so excited to see um, what can we, we can become. Okay. If you got a question, uh, let us get a wireless mic to you. Give us your name and your affiliation. Let's go over here to the left in the back. Kenneth Wilson, Special Olympics, Kansas. So with all the recent changes in the Big 12, including new ch teams joining the conference, how has that impacted your approach to the season in terms of competition, preparation, and maintaining the team's focus for your long-term goals? Um, yeah, that, that, that's a great question. You know, we were – the Big 12 was the best conference in the country two years ago, and then uh, we added teams, and one of the teams we added was the conference champion – and then we were the best conference in the country again last year, and uh, we added teams, and uh, you know, one of the teams picked to win the national championship. And uh, we have five, for the first time in AP poll history, we have five teams in the top 10. And, and so you can get caught up in that, or you can say, man, we just gotta get better every day. And so our approach hasn't changed. We go one and zero every day and uh, try to get a little bit better. And um, then at you know, some point in time we have to face all those guys, uh, but that, that's a ways down the road, and we have a lot of basketball that we have to uh, improve on uh, before we get to that. Okay, hey, we're going to stay over here to the left on the third row. Coach Tang, Jake Stevens with Email Online, Rivals.com. Uh, you're going into your third year here, and there's obviously a lot of roster, over, roster turnover again. Um, how do guys that you bring along with you today, like Max Jones and Coleman Hawkins, kind of play into this new team? Yeah, um, well, first of all, they're both uh, terrific young men. And this is not something that I'm the only one in the country that's, that's facing. I mean, we're all facing this, and so every coach has the same challenge. Um, very thankful that both of them chose to come to K-State. They're both terrific human beings. They're in their fifth year of college basketball, so they have a lot of experience, and, and, and their knowledge – uh, of basketball allows them to pick up on things a lot quicker. Uh, and then they're both guys that their teammates like being around. And so that kind of fosters the chemistry that you have to build. Okay, let's go over here to the right. Hey, Jerome Meyer Metcalf, uh, ESPN back here. Uh, you're 58, uh, Tony Bennett 55, and decided that there was a lot happening in this game that you know he didn't necessarily want to be a part of. How do you feel about all the changes in college basketball and how have you adapted? Yeah, um, well, first of all, uh, when I heard that uh, Tony had retired, um, you know, I, I, my media thought was that, man, it's great to be able to step away on your own terms, right? And because uh, a lot of guys get moved out of the business. And so that was great for Tony and his family. Uh, second thing is Tony's been a head coach for a long time, so he has, has a while to build up a, a nest egg that allows him to, to do that. You know, uh, the Bible tells us that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And uh, I, I, I'm not there yet, so uh, I, I got to keep working. <laughs> and uh, all these changes, like we're all facing it, right? And so you either adapt, you know, you, you get left. And so for me, it's a challenge every day. And I have a, a staff that's very creative and um, Man, they've got young minds and bodies, and, and they're constantly pushing me. And one of my things with our staff is I tell them, hey, man, let's just go push me as far to one end or the other end as possible and let them rein us back in. And, and I, so I got a group of guys that keep me moving forward and don't let me get caught up in um, what is wrong. We just try to figure out what's right and take advantage of it. 
Hey, let's go to the third row over here on the left. Jerome, Gary Parrish, CBS Sports. Um, you've been in this league a long time, longer than most, uh, at Baylor, now at Kansas State. Um, it's always been a strong conference, but at some point it went from a place where you could still go win or reasonably think you can win here or there to, you know, fast forward to today and there's, there's no easy victories on the road. Do you remember a time where you looked up and recognized that uh, the bottom had gotten stronger and that uh, there, there weren't easy places to go anymore? Um. And I don't know if I can pinpoint the time. Uh, when we first, when I first got into the league, we were the easy win, right, at Baylor. And then, uh, you know, Scott and the staff, we were able to build that program. And, uh, I mean, you know, it's just we have great coaches, right, great coaches in the league and, and guys. Uh, and very much like, um, you know, like some of the, the – like the SEC with football, right, uh, you know, they have great coaches and, and players want to play against the best. In, in the Big 12, the recruits, guys we recruit want to play against the best. And the, there's like, it's not close, right? Like, it's not debate. Like, well, I guess people can debate what they want to, but like the results show. I mean, uh, there have been three schools in the last four years to win a national championship, and two of them are from the Big 12. You know, it's just like, like it's best players, best coaches, best environments, you know, and kids want to be a part of that. And that's really uh, the thing. Like, from top to bottom, everybody's good. Everybody's got players. Everybody's got great coaches. Everybody's got great environments. Okay, let's go to the far left on the first front row. Coach John Grobe of Wildcat 91.9 FM. With Coleman Hawkins being named the Big 12 co-newcomer of a year, how do you see his skill set translating to the Big 12? And what kind of role do you see or envision him uh, during the season? Yeah, um, well, whether he was named that or not, um, it wouldn't have changed the fact that he's a very versatile basketball player with a high IQ who can play um, guard and play offensively multiple positions. Um, he takes great joy in watching his teammates have success, and, and you know, that's rare. And, um, and, you know, and then his teammates like him. And so he's going to help us. When he's on the floor, he makes the guys on the floor better players. And so, and, and he makes me look like a better coach. Okay, we've got time for two more questions. Um, we've got one over here on the uh, second row on the far left. And we've got one on the um, next to last row here in the middle. Let's go to in, in the middle here on the next to the last row. <clears throat> Dan Lucero, 580 WIBW Topeka. To, to the point about this being such a competitive league, top to bottom, how important is it mentally to have a team able to roll with the punches, knowing that you could have a team in this league lose six, seven, eight games, and that's still a really good year in this league, but that losing sometimes can wear on a team. How do you get to a point where mentally you're able to roll with the punches and, and still be able to thrive as the year goes on? Yeah, I think it uh, starts with the staff. Right, like uh, the staff has to be able to move on from the last game, and sometimes, as coaches, we let a team beat us twice because we can't get past the last game, and it affects our players. And so, you know, our our thing is we go one and zero, uh, and my definition of toughness is the ability to do the next right thing. And uh, as a team, we have to be able to move on, and so it's something we talk about every day, and, and not not just in of games it's just in in possessions at practice and uh you know whether something went well at in the classroom or or at your apartment like your ability to go on and do the next right thing and and so if if the staff has the ability to let go of things and move on and and not uh bring the last loss with them and you know then the team is going to be able to do that okay our last question is over here on the left second row hey coach timmy Everson, manhattan mercury um, you've gotten to see your guys go up against themselves quite a bit. You've gotten to see them go up against some other people just a little bit. Through this opening early part of the season, what's the thing you like about this group the most so far? Wow. Um, man, there's a lot to like about these guys. I, I don't know if I can pinpoint one thing. Um, what I've enjoyed is seeing them empty their cup and allow us to fill it. Um, we have a bunch of guys that have – been coached by some really good coaches and been in some really good programs and had success and so sometimes you bring all that with you and think that's the way 
the only way to have success. And in the game of basketball, there's a lot of ways to get to four. And uh, I've been so pleased that our guys have been willing to empty their cup and let us fill it and, and realize that the, the way we do it will allow them to have success also and, and see the buy-in that's taking place.